Um, let's see. Israel retaliated. Israel bombed Iran. I mean, you barely noticed because the sound was very muted. But yeah, Israel actually did bomb Iran. The Iranians are, are comparing it to a pinprick and have said they would not retaliate, which I guess is what the United States and Israel wanted. They wanted to bomb Iran in a way that would not cause the Iranians to retaliate. So they did something very, very, very small, uh, but supposedly very, very symbolic. Now, it could be, I mean, there was, an, uh, there was the possibility, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but it could be a possibility that this was some kind of precursor to what is going to happen in the next few days, or maybe Israel does something small like this every day, or I, I don't know. But if this is it, then this really hasn't achieved anything uh, other than letting us know that Israel has some pretty amazing capabilities. Um, I think everybody knew that already. I expect that even the Iranians knew that already. But just to make sure, today Israel did something that would be cool out of context. Um, as you know, uh, Iran launched over 300 uh, projectiles, uh, drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles towards Israel uh, on Saturday, and um, uh, they didn't do any damage. 99% of them were shot down, uh, and, and nothing really happened. And, um, you know, in the immediate reaction was, oh, we're going to crush them. We're going to do something devastating. We're going to show them. We're going to, you know, this is all out war. We're going to take them on. And then it was a little muted, and then Netanyahu had a phone call with uh, Biden. And I guess Biden is such a overwhelmingly authoritative, charismatic, confident, and assertive leader that Netanyahu just said, whoa, yeah, you convinced me. Uh, we'll have to do a different path. We won't be that tough. Uh, whoops, I, I, I don't know how I, how I got so confused. Anyway, uh, last night, it looked like something happened. The initial reports were that uh, uh, three drones or some drones had attacked uh, an Air Force facility in Iran, uh, in, in uh, central Iran, Ashraf, uh, which is uh, just south, south of Tehran, not far from one of the major uh, nuclear installations that uh, the Iranians have, where the centrifuges are. And uh, the first reports were not only with these drones, but these were like those propeller drones that you can buy at Best Buy. So there was these little drones with four like spinning propellers, like little helicopters. Uh, and so those would be drones without much of a distance. They can't fly very far. So then the speculation was, whoa, were these launched within Iran? Were these launched from Kurdistan, were these, uh, which is on the border of Iran and, and Iraq? where Israel probably has an intelligence presence or special forces presence. Where were they launched from? How did they get all the way to central Iran? I mean, what was going on here? And what did they do? What did they attack? Of course, the Iranians claimed that they had knocked down all uh, three of them. About two hours ago, uh, more, I think, credible reports have come out over the last two hours about what actually happened. It turns out that Israel flew uh, one or two airplanes, uh, or, or, or more, hard to tell how many airplanes, but they flew airplanes all the way to eastern Iraq, so uh, probably through Syria, got all the way to eastern Iraq undetected, undetected by uh, the, the Syrians, Iraqis, Iranians, and, and who knows who else. I mean, I don't know about the Russians and the Americans, uh, but uh, flew all the way uh, to eastern Iraq, and uh, where they launched three ballistic missiles from the airplanes, three ballistic missiles that all hit uh, the target, and the target was a S-300 uh, anti-aircraft uh, facility right next to the nuclear facility, the Iranian nuclear facility in Ashraf, uh, which is uh, Asfahan, sorry, Asfahan, not Ashraf, Asfahan, which is uh, in central Iran. Now... <laughs> I guess this sends a message to the Iranians. We can take out your, uh, mis your missile defense, your aircraft defense systems at will whenever we want. We can fly hundreds of miles from Israel uh, undetected and attack you. We, with three bombs, have done more damage to you 
than you managed to do with over 300 bombs. So I guess all those messages uh, are sent. It also suggests uh, those missiles could have targeted your nuclear facility and then next time they might. So all of those messages were sent. We can reach in, we can do it undetected. We, we have this amazing capabilities, our planes, F-35s, assumes, uh, stealth, you won't even know what hits you. And by the way, the S-300 anti-aircraft battery, no match for the technology we have. Which, by the way, you know, I don't know how to say this politely, but everybody frigging knew already, right? I mean, the S-300 uh, batteries have been in Syria f f for a long time. This is not a brand new technology. It's been in Syria for a long time. The Israelis have taken out many, I don't know how many, many S-300, uh, you know, Russian anti-aircraft batteries. So uh, nothing new there. Anyway, the whole thing is stunningly disappointing and pathetic, if this is it, if this is it. And I'm seeing a lot of commentators saying, whoa, Israel showed how competent it is, how able it is, it has these capabilities, it has this ability to reach. Everybody knew this. The Iranians know this, the Israelis know this, the Russians know this. The Americans know this, the Jordanians, the Syrians, the Lebanese, and the Gazans probably know it as well. Everybody knows this. Nothing new was revealed yesterday except the fact, not new, I guess, that Israel will not use its capabilities to actually do anything of substance, actually engage the enemy, actually destroy their capabilities. I don't know. I mean, me, I, I have no special intelligence, so I, I, I don't know anything. But, I, I mean, the only explanation I have for this, I mean, the only explanation I have for the whole way in which Israel has responded to this is that Israeli intelligence is convinced that the Iranians cannot develop a nuclear bomb, that the Iranians are far away from developing such a bomb, that such a bomb is not a realistic threat to, to Israel. Uh, and therefore, Israel doesn't have to worry about that and it can play games with the Iranians for now. Right. I, I don't get it otherwise. Because if, if the Iranians have the capacity to build a bomb and it, it's weeks or months or whatever for them to build a bomb, why wouldn't Israel use overwhelming force to destroy the Iranian nuclear capabilities? Why? Yeah. You know, and, and so the, it just doesn't make any sense destroying an S-300 battery, which Israel can destroy whenever it wants to. Uh, it has, it has uh, nothing. Maybe, maybe they're softening up defenses for future attack. That's what I thought initially when I first heard about this. But why then take out only one battery? Why do you even need to soften them up? Why couldn't you have... One airplane take out the battery and one airplane strike the nuclear facility. Or well, five airplanes strike the nuclear facility while two airplanes strike the S-300. It just doesn't make any sense. It's just that, you know, maybe every day they'll go in and do one thing. Um, but the S-300 is ineffective against F-35s anyway. We all know that. I mean, God, anybody who follows, sorry, anybody who follows, not everybody knows this, but anybody who follows the, the military capabilities, anybody who follows the Israeli military, anybody who follows, knows that the S-300, the battery that they took out in Iran, is not a threat to F-35s. And so there is really no explanation for this other than Israel needed to do something to appease its own internal pressures, its own internal populace, its own internal politics. Um, they wanted to do something that didn't piss off the Americans, the Saudis, the, Qua the, the, the I don't know, the, 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 the Jordanians and the UAE, UAE and their so-called pretend allies. And that was achieved because nobody's going to be offended by this. And they wanted to do something that didn't 
escalate didn't cause a regional war, but Israel should want a regional war. Get it over with. It's time for a regional war. It's time that Iran gets, this regime in Iran gets destroyed. It's time to call them. It's time to challenge them. When is this, when is it going to be more convenient? When they have a nuke? I mean, yeah, granted, it would be more convenient if Israel was done with Gaza and out of Gaza, and that was not an issue. Sure. But you're not going to be able to call the shots. The Iranians just handed you, handed you a gift on a silver platter by attacking Israel on Saturday. A massive gift. You could have gone and done anything, and mostly the world would say, you know, you shouldn't have been so harsh, but we understand Anyway, I, I, I don't get it. it. It makes me super angry, super frustrated. Again, maybe there is a more subtle plan here. Maybe this is just to show the Iranians Israel can do it. And then after the Passover, that's after the 30th, they go in and they do something more substantive. Maybe tonight they do something more substantive. I don't know. Maybe it's softening of the target, like, like somebody said. Maybe. I, I, I am super skeptical about all of those. I think it's just a sign of um, inability to come to make the hard decisions, inability to actually make the decision to escalate. This is the kind of mentality, the kind of action, the kind of program, the kind of whatever you want, appeasement, that brought Israel October 7th. This is the kind of government policies that bring Israel... Uh, you know, uh, more danger, more harm. Uh, and, and this is exactly the kind of action that convinces the enemy that Israel is weak and is susceptible. And yes, it has the mightiest military, maybe second mightiest military force, second to the United States. Although, you know, a military like Russia could just overwhelm, uh, like China could just overwhelm it with numbers. But uh, it doesn't matter because, because... It won't use it, and therefore, what's the point? Anyway, there we have it. Uh, this is Israel's response, at least so far. We'll keep track of this and, and keep, you, uh, keep you updated.